Okay, let's look at uh, a problem called the ballistic pendulum. And uh, to solve this type of problem, uh, you need the conservation of momentum and the conservation of uh, energy. And when you see a problem like this, you know you need these areas to solve the problem because you can't solve it any other way. You know, uh, and I'm very inquisitive. When I see something like a ballistic pendulum, I want to know how, how, how do you solve that? You know, or what it's used for. I'm very inquisitive. Some people aren't inquisitive. They'll just go through life using what everybody else uses and never question anything, but not me. Uh, I'm very inquisitive. Uh, so let's look at the ballistic pendulum and what that does. Okay. The ballistic pendulum. How do you measure the speed of a bullet? And that's the question you would ask if, if you would see ballistic pendulum. And that's what it's used for, to measure the speed of a bullet. How would you approach the problem to solve it? Well, ballistic pendulum. How fast is a bullet? Ballistic pendulum will tell you that. Well, the speed of sound at sea level is about 343 meters per second, or 1,125 feet per second, or 767 miles per hour. That's the speed of sound at sea level. During the Civil War, the ballistic pendulum was the only method to determine the velocity of a bullet. Today, bullets and baseball pitches, fastballs are measured quite easily with a radio detection and ranging gun, which is called a radar gun. And that's where the word radar comes from, radio detection and ranging gun. Okay, so that's where radar gun comes from. Radar is radio, radio detection and ranging. Many of you have experienced the feeling of, of this radar gun after having paid a speeding ticket. Okay, but during the Civil War, all that was available was a ballistic pendulum. Let's investigate this ballistic pendulum and see how we use it. Okay, we have, let's say we have a speeding bullet, okay, and this bullet is headed towards this ballistic pendulum, and this is our ballistic pendulum here, it's hanging from a ceiling, it's hanging from a ceiling, and it has a length L, and it's a piece of wood, a piece of heavy wood to capture this bullet. Okay, and this bullet's going to be fired into this wood. This wood, foam, or whatever you can use to capture this bullet, okay? And uh, we call this block here a capture block, okay? And then what's going to happen is once this bullet hits this block, this block is going to rotate upwards at some angle, okay? Theta, angle theta. And it's this, it's in this, uh, Cable is length L is very light cable, so uh, we can forget about its mass, okay? And so the block is going to rotate upward, and so from the, the the level here to the H height is what we need to measure, okay? And once this block moves up, this block is going to have a velocity in the, of the block and the bullet. Okay, and once this block moves a certain distance, a certain angle, theta, which is going to give us a certain height is going to move above the horizontal, is also going to move some distance x, distance x. Okay, so you can either measure the distance x, the theta angle, or the height, h. Either one is up to you, which you, you want to measure. Sometimes you would, will want to measure x, because theta is very small and the height is very small. So you may want to measure X. Okay. Uh, let's calculate the velocities. Let's see how that works. Okay, we have the conservation of mechanical energy and the conservation of momentum. Okay. So before the collision and after the collision, momentum is conserved. Okay, that means the momentum for the bullet is transferred to 
the block. So we have the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet that's before the collision and is equal that's equal to the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block. Okay, so that's after the collision. So momentum is conserved. What it means is it's conserved. That means it's equal. Before and after is equal. Okay. So here we go. Let's solve that. So if we divide through by mass of the bullet, we divide both sides of this, this equation by mass of the bullet, we get the velocity of the bullet is equal to the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block divided by the mass of the bullet because we divided both sides by the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the block. And this is an inelastic collision. What I mean by that is that the bullet and the block stick together. That means the block captures the bullet. The bullet doesn't go through the block, okay? It stops inside of the block. The bullet hits that block and it stops inside somewhere, okay? Now, let's look at after the collision. After the collision, mechanical energy is conserved, okay? Let's see what that says, okay? Kinetic energy after the collision is equal to potential energy after the collision. So the kinetic energy after the collision is one half the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times velocity of the block squared. That's after the collision. And potential energy after the collision is mass of the bullet plus mass of the block times G times H. Mg times H is potential energy. And H is this height risen. The, the, the height above the horizontal that the block rose to. Okay. So if we divide both sides of this equation by mass of bullet plus mass of the block, we'll see that's on both sides of the equation. So they cancel each other out. So all we're left with is one half the velocity squared of the block is equal to G times the height risen. If we multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we get the velocity squared of the block is equal to 2 times g times h, the height risen. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we get the velocity of the block, block is equal to the square root of 2g times h, or the height risen. Okay, let's see how we get the height. It, because this can get a little tricky. You can mark height by some method or you can measure the angle by some method, okay? So here's our equations we came up on the previous slide. We have the velocity of the block is equal to mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block divided by the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the block. And then the velocity of the block is equal to square root of 2g times h. Well, we can take that and put it into there because they're the same equation, okay? But we'll look at this. Let's look at our bullet. So, okay. Our bullet hit this block, and the block rose up to here. It swung. The pendulum swung. Some angle theta. Okay. How do we find H? Well, let's look at this triangle right here. Right here. Let's look at this triangle with theta. This length is L, the length of the cable, and this is theta. So cosine adjacent. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, adjacent is what we want to find. So the adjacent is equal to L times the cosine theta. Okay. And if we swing this block back down here, we see from the top of the block to the ceiling is L. So from the top to the risen height, is L cosine theta, so then the height must be L minus L cosine theta. And then we factor out L, we have H equals L times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. And that's how we get H. Okay. Since we've done that, done that, let's calculate the velocity of a 357 magnum bullet. Okay? 
Well, there's something I want to tell you about a 357 Magnum bullet. A 357 Magnum bullet is the same diameter as a 38 bullet. Okay. So a 357, if you take a 357 and put a 38 bullet in, you can fire it. But if you take a 357 bullet and put it in a 38, you're going to blow yourself up because the pressures are different. It has it has much more load on it. Okay, and so a 38 can't handle that pressure. That pressure is called hoop stress. And that 38 bullet is not capable of handling that hoop stress. It's going to blow up and probably hurt you. You know, so you don't want to do that. Which you can't do it because they've changed the design of the 38 where it won't chamber the 357 Magnum. But that's nice to know. Okay. So anyway, a 357 Magnum. Mass of a bullet. The mass of the bullet is equal to 158 grains or 10.2 grams. One grain is equal to 0 0.0647989 grams. Okay, so if we want 158 grains, we multiply both sides by 158, and we get 158 grams equal 158 times that number we just talked about is equal to, and you'll see it comes out to 10.2 grams. Okay, the mass of the block is 3,632 grams, or 8 pounds, or 3.632 3 kilograms, okay? Okay, now, the measured angle, when I fired this 357 into the block, comes out to be 21.18 degrees, and the length of my cable is 1 meter, okay? So, here's my H, okay? So, if I put uh, 21.18 de degrees in for theta, I get cosine 21.18 degrees. I take the cosine of that. I get 0 0.934. And then uh, I subtract 1 minus 0 0.9324. And multiply by one, I get 0 0.0676 meters, okay? So, the velocity of the block is equal to square root of 2 times g times h. Well, we know h now. So, we just multiply in, uh, put our h in and multiply that. So, we put replace velocity of the block with, with our square root of 2 g times h. And then we plug in our numbers. And we get velocity of bullet is equal to 411.2 meters per second, or 1,349 feet per second. That's pretty fast. Let's calculate the energy of this 357 Magnum bullet. Okay, the ratio of the energy after the collision to the energy before the collision, okay. And the reason why I can do this is because I've already cal I've already calculated the correct bullet velocities. I've already calculated the velocity of the bullet and the velocity of the block from conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. The reason why I couldn't do it before and after the collision with energy is because energy is not conserved. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. So the final energy is one half the mass, one half times the mass of the bullet times the mass of the block times the velocity of the block squared. Okay. So we take these two and divide, divide E final by E initial, and uh, this is what we get. Okay. We get E final on top and E uh, initial on the bottom, okay? And so the halves cancel, and so I get mass of the bullet plus mass of the block times velocity of one of the block times velocity of power of one of the block. I just separated those two. It's velocity of the block squared, and I just velocity of the block times velocity of the block, okay? And that's the initial is one half the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet squared. That's kinetic energy before. Okay. 
And so I just separated the bullet to time velocity of the bullet times velocity of the bullet, which is velocity of the bullet squared. You will see why. Okay, from conserv conservation of momentum, mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet is equal to mass of the bullet plus the velocity of the block times the velocity of the block. Okay, that's the conservation of momentum. So if I divide each one of these through by velocity of the block, I get mass mass of the bullet divided by mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block. Okay, equal to velocity of the block divided by velocity of the bullet. Well, look up here. I got velocity of the block divided by velocity of the bullet, velocity of the block divided by velocity of the bullet. So if I take one of these and replace it with this, I get what? Let's see. I take one of these and replace it with this, and I get this cancel. Mass of the bullet plus mass of the block divided by mass of the bullet times mass of the block cancels. Mass of the bullet cancels. And all I'm left with is velocity of the block times the velocity of the bullet. Or I change those to final and initial. So final and initial velocity, is, is we already saw, is equal to mass of the bullet divided by mass of the bullet plus mass of the block from the conservation of momentum. So, I can calculate the energies. Okay, so, uh, let me get back to where I was before. So, I can calculate the energies, okay? So, the uh, velocity of my block is from cons conservation of momentum. Here we got velocity, final velocity div divided by the initial velocity which is equal to the mass of the bullet divided by the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the plot. Okay. And so uh, we plug in our numbers for that. We'll get 0 0.0028 or multiply by 100. We get 28%, 0 0.28%. That means 0.28% of the kinetic energy remains after the initial energy. So if we subtract that from 100, we get 99.72% of the energy was transferred into heat in other forms. That's why we couldn't use the conservation of energy before and after the impact, because they're not equal, they're not conserved. The kinetic energy before the impact is not transferred totally into the kinetic energy after the impact. Okay, some of it is transferred into heat due to friction and some and other things, okay? This is why we cannot equate kinetic energy before the collision to kinetic energy after the collision to find the velocity of the bullet. Energy is not conserved during the collision. Some energy is transferred into heat. Okay. Here's another method. Okay, here's another method here. Uh, Let's do the kinetic energy of the bullet before the bullet hits the block. Well, we know that's one half the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet squared. So if we plug in our numbers of uh, 10.2 grams or 0 0.0102 kilograms times the velocity of the bullet squared, which is 411.2 meters per second, we get 862.34 newton meters or joules of energy. Okay, what's the kinetic energy of the bullet plus the block after the collision? Well, we know the velocity of the block is equal to square root of 2g times h. We know the kinetic energy after the collision is one half the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times the velocity of the block, which we got the velocity of the block here. Okay, so if we take the square root of both sides, we take the square of both sides, we get velocity block squared is, is equal to 2g times h. Well, we just plug that into there. So we got one half the mass of bullet plus the mass of block times 2g times h, okay? And if we plug in our numbers 
the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times 2 times G, which is 9.81 meters per second square, times H, which we know is 0 0.0676. And if we multiply all of that out, we get kinetic final energy, energy is equal to 2.42 newtons, meters, or joules. So if you look at this, look at all of that energy that's been dissipated. It hit the block with this energy, and that the final energy was 2.42. 4.2 newton meters. That's a lot of energy lost. So if we take the ratio of the final to the initial, we get 0 0.0028 joules of energy remain. And that's what we got before. Okay? So we can do this because we have previously calculated the correct velocities using the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy. Okay, one more thing. Let's look at this. We have the velocity of the bullet is equal to 411.2 meters per second. We also note that, note that the speed of sound, which I said in the first slide, was 343 meters per second, okay? So if we take the ratio of those two, the speed of sound to the speed of the bullet, we get the speed of sound is equal to 0.8341 of the speed of the bullet is 83%. That means that if someone was firing a pistol at you, a 357 Magnum, you would feel it before you would hear it because the speed of sound lags the speed of the bullet. Okay? And that's, this is similar to being struck by lightning. You will feel the lightning before you hear its thunder because the speed of uh, the, the lightning is faster than the speed of sound. Okay? What happens when you can't measure H or theta accurately? Then you measure the X, distance moved by the block. Let's see how to do that. We use the same equations, but this time we have to get H in terms of X because theta and H are very small. So the velocity of the bullet is equal to, as it was before, mass of the bullet plus mass of the block divided by mass of the bullet times the velocity of the block. And the velocity of the block is equal to square root of 2g times h. Okay. And uh, we have our setup the same as before. Our angle, our block moved, distance x. Okay. So, let me move that down a little bit. There you go. We have our distance x. Okay. And this is what we're going to measure because we're assuming, let's say well, our angle theta is small. Okay. So, we have h is equal to l times 1 minus cosine theta as before. As previously, nothing, nothing changed. Let's see how we find x. Now, I... I'm going to show you uh, later on, I think I have it in here, that you could say the sine theta is equal to L times the sine of theta, which is very small, okay? But I'm not showing it here because that's the easy way to do it, okay? So, find H in terms of X. So, H is well times 1 minus cosine theta. To do this, we need to expand cosine theta with Taylor's theorem. Okay, so Taylor's theorem is equal to the function theta is equal to f of 0 plus the first derivative at f of 0 times x plus the second derivative at 0 times x squared divided by 2 factorial plus the third derivative at z, z, x equals 0, theta equals 0 times x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x f to the fourth derivative, x, the fourth derivative of x times at zero times x to the fourth divided by four factorial. If you go all the way out to the four factorial, you'll come up with the sine theta, okay? But I didn't do that. I just went out to, what, x squared, I think. Okay. So this is how you do that. f of theta is equal to cosine theta because that's it right there. We're taking cosine theta, okay? f of 0, uh, when theta is 0, we plug 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. 
Okay. I would say take the first derivative of theta. Well, the first derivative of theta is derivative of cosine is minus sine. Okay, so that's minus sine theta. And the first derivative at zero, theta is zero, is zero, because sine zero is zero. Okay, take the second derivative of theta. Well, the second derivative of cosine theta, of sine th minus sine theta is cosine theta. And you put zero in for cosine theta, and you get minus one, because there's a minus sign there, and so forth. So, therefore, we got our Taylor's theorem here, f of theta, f of zero, plus f first prime of zero times x, plus second derivative of zero, f of zero times x squared or two factorial, plus zero, and so forth and so on. You keep going. So, okay. So, at f of zero, f of 0 is equal to cosine 0 is equal to 1. First derivative at 0 is equal to 0. The second derivative of z at 0 is equal to minus 1. Okay. So I plug those in and I get uh, 1 because there's 0 here. 0 plus 0 plus minus x squared 2 factorial where x equals theta. Okay. And 2 factorial is equal to 2 times 1. So okay. So I change that to put theta in there, and therefore, f of theta is equal to 1 minus theta squared over 2. So I put, plug this into here, where cosine is, okay, and I get what? I get L times 1 minus 1 plus theta squared over 2, which is L times theta squared over 2. See, when I plug this in here, I get 1 minus all of this that I plugged in here. Okay? And then I'm, this 1 minus is multiplied by that, so I get that minus 1, and minus times a minus is a plus. Okay? So I get H equals L times theta squared over 2. But I want H in terms of X. Okay, not theta. Okay. If you remember from your 10th grade math, since angle theta is very small, theta x is equal to L times theta in radians. Okay. So x equals L times theta. So if I divide both sides by L, I get theta is equal x over L. Okay. Theta is equal to x over L. So if I plug x over L in there for theta, I get x over L squared divided by 2 times L. And that gives me L times x squared divided by 2L squared. One of the L's cancel. So I get x, h is equal to x squared over 2L, which is, our, which is what I wanted. Okay? And finally, since I know h in terms of x, I can plug this into my original height and get the velocity of the block is equal to the square root of g times x squared over l. Well, the square root of x squared is just x. Okay. So, I get velocity of the bullet is equal to mass of the bullet plus mass of the block divided by the mass of the bullet times x times the square root of g over l. And now, all I got to do is measure x. So my x came out to 0.5 centimeters, which is small, small, two and a half inches probably. So uh, my velocity of my bullet, my, my bullet is equal to two grams. I changed my, my bullet from 10 grams to two grams. This is like a small BB, okay? But this wood block is the same. It's a huge eight-pound block, okay? So it's not going to move it very far, all right? So that's why I'm measuring X. So if I take and plug in all my numbers for the velocity 
uh, for the x is equal point zero five meters. Change change uh, uh, centimeters to meters. And the square root of g divided by m that gives me the velocity of the block is equal to zero point one five six six meters per second. Okay. And then the velocity of the bullet is equal to this times x. Okay. And that's equal to uh, one eight one seven for this part here, point zero five, three point one three three two one. That's the square root of nine point eight one. And then I multiply these three numbers, point one eight, point one eight excuse me, 1817 by 0 0.05 times 3.1321, and I get 284.55 meters per second, which is 636.52 miles per hour. Okay, now, let's calculate H and theta. Well, since we know X, H is equal to X squared over 2L, we know theta is equal to x over l, where x is equal to 0 0.05 meters. All we got to do is plug those in. So we got 0 0.05 meters squared divided by 2 times 1 meter. Okay. We get 0 0.00125 meters for h. And that's very small. Okay. So h is equal to 25 eighths of an inch. That's very small. Okay, and so theta is equal to x over L was 0 0.05 divided by 1. So that's 0 0.05 radians, and we've got to change radians to degrees. And to do that, we multiply by 180 degrees, and we divide by pi radians. And we multiply 0 0.05 by 180 divided by pi, and we get theta is equal to 2.86 degrees, which theta was very small. So you see that the small grant, but small bullet that I use didn't move theta very much. Only two, a little bit bigger than two and a half degrees. Okay, and H was very small. So that's why I mentioned X. And that was because we have a small bullet equal two grams and a heavy capture wood block equals 3.632 kilograms. Okay. Isn't this exciting? I mean, this is amazing to me. I like it. No. Until next time, learn some mathematics. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you.